Hello and welcome to my video. If you came in this video, that means that you need help with Capsum and you arrived at the right place. Uh, however, before we start anything, uh, you need to go and read the team member guide uh, on Capsum uh, because after reading this, Capsum is gonna make so much sense for you. It's only 24 pages, so please read it. Um, it, it, it will make everything easier, trust me. Okay, so we're starting with the balanced scorecard. This is the score to uh, each team. Uh, so basically, uh, to win the competition, you need to have the highest balanced scorecard score. Uh, let's go and start and uh, look at this balanced scorecard. So uh, the first thing you'll see in here is that there is no credit, partial credit, and full credit. So this is how uh, the score is divided. You, know, you could get no credit, you could get partial, partial credit, you could get full credit. Uh, so to get full credit in stock price, you need to have a stock price of $32 or more. Um, and then it, to get full credit in profits, you need to have profits of seven million or more. And leverage, which is the ratio of assets to equity, you need to have it between 1.8 and 2.8 to get full credit. And for contribution margin, contribution margin in here, you need to have your average contribution margin, which is um, the average contribution margin of your products. So you have five products when you start, so the average for contribution mar of contribution margins of all your products need to be 36% or more. And then plant utilization. Uh, you need to produce 100% of your plant utilization or more. So you need to produce 100% or more. And it has to be between 100% and 180%. So you need to use, basically, what they're saying is that you need to use your plant. You can't have a plant and not use it. You can't have a, va a, fa a factory and not use it. So you need to produce, you need to use its, you, you need to use it at what, at least at 100% capacity. Um, and then your days of working capital. Uh, days of working capital is uh, your, cur your current assets minus current liabilities in days. So your Days of working capital needs to be between 30 and 90 and uh, to be really uh, sure that um, when you're looking at your balanced scorecard before the end of each round, before when you make decisions, you should make th this between uh, 45 and uh, 65. That's, that, that's my recommendation. And uh, the reason of that, because um, sometimes uh, things don't go as you planned. And uh, w for example, you don't sell enough, you don't sell as you expected that you will sell. Uh, and uh, when that happens, that affects your days of working capital. And um, it might go over eight, over 90 or less than 30. So you need to make sure that you're far from the 30 and far from the 90. Okay, and the next two, we have stock out cost and inventory carrying cost. So for your stock out cost, stock out cost is the lost sales due to stock out as a percentage of overall sales. Let's give an example. So you produced 100 units. And your customers, your customers want 150 units. That means that you will sell out. You will sell everything at 100 units. You will sell everything that you have. You'll sell 100, uh, and uh, customers will still want and demand 50 units from you. 
that means that you have a stock out cost. That, that 50 units is your stock out cost. Um, so to get full credit in stock out cost, you need to have 0% stock out cost. This means that you need to make sure that you, you give your customers what they demanded. So if your customers demanded 100, you give them 100. If your customers demanded 150, you give them 150. Uh, if you don't, uh, you, if you don't, you need to be less than 5% short. You need to be less than 5% short or um, you will end up getting a, a zero, no credit. And then for inventory carrying cost, uh, this is the opposite of stock out cost. Inventory carrying cost, let's say, let give the same example. Let's say that um, your customers demanded this time, this time, your customers demanded 100 units and you produced 150 units. This means that you will, you, you, you will give your customers the 100 units. They all gonna buy it. They're, I mean, I mean, they're gonna buy it. Uh, and then you're gonna have 50 units left that no one wanted, no one demanded. Uh, so you have 50 units left in your inventory. For each unit in your inventory, you're paying inventory carrying cost, right? You're paying inventory carrying cost. And therefore, you're gonna have, if, you, if this example is real, you're, you're gonna have no credit in it. So to get full credit in uh, inventory carrying cost, you need to have equal or less to 1% inventory carrying cost. So from your total production, you need to have at most 1% of your inventory left. So you need to, um, you, you need to sell everything that you have. And um, that's, that's uh, inventory carrying cost. Uh, and then customer buying criteria. Customer buying criteria is basically what customers want in your product. So your product needs to match what customers want. And uh, the score of the customer buying criteria needs to be 30, 39 or more to get full credit. Um, and then your customer awareness, it is basically the proportion of customers that know of your products, sales weighted. Uh, it is the strength of your promotion efforts. So what this, this is basically what this means is how many customers, or what's, what's the percentage of customers in the market who know about your uh, product? So uh, you need to have 90% or more customers knowing about your product in the market to have full credit. So this means that you need to start investing in customer awareness from the beginning. Um, you need to invest a lot in the promotion budget. Um, and then customer accessibility is how easy it is for customers to purchase your products. Sales weighted, it is the strength of your distribution channels. So th what this means is that you need to also invest in accessibility because you need to make your product accessible. Customers don't want to go and do the hardest things to reach your product. Like if, uh, for example, if, I, if you have to drive 100 miles to get a product, uh, will you go to get that? Or you can drive one mile and get the same product, just different company. You're probably going to go for the one mile. Uh, I don't know. Some people would go for the 100 mile, but I'm not one of them. Um, so that's customer accessibility. And also for customer accessibility, you need to have 90% or more to get full credit. Um, so th what this means is that 90% of customers who are aware of your product have access to your product. And then product count. Product count is how many products you have in market. So to get full credit, you need to have eight products in the market. When you start the simulation, you're gonna have five products in market. Uh, me personally, um, I did not introduce any new products. And the reason that I di did not introduce any new products is because I did not want my new products to interfere and, and affect my other uh, scorecard 
uh, my other scorecard, right? Um, for example, if you introduce a new product, uh, this will affect your profit because you're going to be investing in that product. So you might not get full, full, full credit in profit. And um, then your leverage might be affected. Your days of capital might be affected, right? And then your contribution margin also might be affected. So all these things might be affected. Your carrying costs, your stock out costs, your inventory carrying costs, all these, they might be affected from that. So me personally, I saw that this, that introducing a new product is a big risk. And look at this. When you have five products, you have 2.9 out of five. So each round, you're losing only 2.1 points. Um, uh, me personally, in, in, in a simulation that is only eight rounds, uh, I don't see that introducing a product is uh, beneficial. I don't think that it's, an, well, it might be beneficial in the long run. However, I don't see it as effective and sufficient. So I did not do it. Uh, you can do whatever you think is right. I thought that it is a big risk and I did not want to do it. Uh, S, G, and A expenses, they are uh, sales, general, and administrative expenses as a percentage of sales. So uh, to make sure that you always get full credit in uh, S, G, and A expenses, uh, you need to make sure that you invest in TQM once it is available for you. So fully invest in TQM to make sure that uh, these expenses don't really um, affect your balance scorecard. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, your employee turnover rate. Your employee turnover rate uh, is um, the percentage of your overworked and unemployed workforce you lose each year. So to fix this and make sure that you get better score in it, you need to invest in your HR. Um, and uh, I recommend investing the maximum. Uh, I always I always invested the maximum. It's not too much money, uh, and uh, it, it gives you a good score. So uh, invest invest in uh, the employee turnover rate. Okay, and then here, this part of the balance scorecard is the recap score. Um, the recap score is um, basically the results of this score. So this score is gonna be your score every round. This score is your score at the end. So don't worry when you start, you're gonna have bad um, scores in here. It's because the people who were running the company before you suck <laughs> and they don't know anything. So, um, yeah, so yeah, uh, make sure that you do well in here. When you do well in here every round, by the end, you're gonna see that this is turning better and becoming better. Um, so yeah, don't, don't, don't bother looking at this in the beginning and do very well in here. Okay. So this is the end of our, uh, balance scorecard, uh, overview. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope that you learned something from this video. Uh, in the next video, I will be discussing customer buying criteria, customer awareness and customer accessibility. Please go and watch that. I'm gonna be discussing these in depth. I'm gonna I'm gonna also discuss everything in the balance scorecard in depth. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna show you how you can calculate everything, how you can make sure that you make the right decisions uh, in this simulation. Uh, so please support me, give me a like, um, and um, subscribe, and go and watch the other videos. And good luck in your simulation.